In the next few videos, I will work with the socket.io library. As for working with web sockets, the common introductional lesson seems to be including the chat functionality to a web app, so that's what I will do. On the getting started menu point in the socket.io website, it goes through line by line how to broadcast messages from the server to the clients that are connected to it. And I'm going to do something similar. I will integrate the chat functionality into the Mern stack app that I've been building during the previous videos. That will include not only the basic general chatting, where all the users receive the message from everyone else, but also chat rooms, when only users in a specific room can send and receive messages, and private messages, where two users can chat between each other. I start this Mern Fruits web application where I stopped last time. You can get the code from GitHub, download the npm packages, and then start frontend and backend simultaneously with npm run dev. I have the list of users stored in the Mongo database, and my goal is that once these users are logged in on different computers, they will be able to send chat messages to each other. I will use the socket.io library for that, but before I start to use any web sockets, I just create a new component called chat. That's where I want all the messaging to happen, and it will be a functional component like all the others, and first it just says chat comes here. Once I have created the component, I go to the app.js, import it, and define the root path inside of the JSX file. And finally, in the header, I make sure that there will be a link pointing to that path, and by using conditional rendering, this link will only be shown once the user is logged in. So let's say I have here the Mernfruits app, I log in as Adam, which is a user I created in one of the previous videos, then I see the chat link, and if I click on this link, I can see the chat comes here message. So this is the component dedicated for chatting. In socket.io, the two main methods are the emit and the on. These are used to send and receive events, and optionally some data with it. The emit method has an event name as the first argument and an optional second argument, which is usually a JavaScript object. As for the on method, the first argument is also an event name, and the second one is a function where the data coming with the specific event can be used as the function's argument. For example, if there is a text message coming from the client to the server, the server can console.log out that message to the terminal, or it could also broadcast it to the other clients by using another emit method. In order to be able to use the socket.io library, I need to install it both on the server side and on the client side, and I will start with the server. npm install socket.io in the terminal, and then to get started with it, I just follow the instructions from the socket.io website, create a server variable, which I will use for requiring socket.io, and I store it in a so-called IO variable. Then on the bottom, I rewrite app.listen to server.listen, and a little above that, I make the first on method, io.on, where the event name will be connection. That's a reserved event name, it's not made up by me. With this event, every time a new socket connection is established, I can call a function. So first, what this function will do is simply console.log hello from the server. But later, this function will get really large. And now if I restart the server, I won't see any message in the terminal yet, and that's because for a server-client connection, I would also need a client. So let's move on to the front-end. I need to install the socket.io-client package here, so I stop the server, enter the front-end folder, and npm install socket.io-client. And after the installation is done, I'm ready to use this module. I only want to use sockets inside of the chat component and nowhere else, and in this case I can simply import io from socket.io-client somewhere on the top of the chat.js file and make const socket equals io parenthesis. And now if I save, restart the server and open the browser, I can see the hello from the server message in the terminal, and that means that now there is a socket connection between the client and the server. These sockets are JavaScript objects, and they have an ID property, which is different for every socket connection. So I can modify the message in the server.js to display the socket ID on the terminal as well, and then I can see what the new output will be. Here the ID of the freshly connected socket is this string here. 
And that's how I can keep track of the different socket connections between client and server. The next step is that I want to keep track of the sockets that are currently connected to the server. I will keep the socket IDs in an array called users and whenever there is a new connection I just put the new socket ID in this users array and right after that I display the array in the terminal. And then I also have to make sure that when a client disconnects its socket ID gets deleted from the users array and for that I can use another reserved event name, the disconnect, and I can say that every time a socket gets disconnected I filter through the users array and keep only the elements that are not equal the ID of the currently disconnected socket. Then all the elements will stay in the array except for the one that just disappeared. And to be able to check it, again I display the users array after deleting the item. And then let's try out what it does. I can open a tab in the browser, then there is a new connection as I can see in the terminal, then I open two other tabs and the terminal should display three socket IDs. If I close one of the tabs, let's say this one in the middle, the user's array length is now two. And finally, after closing all the tabs, the terminal will sooner or later display an empty array. So this is how I can keep track of the connected sockets on the backend. Now let's make them display on the front end as well. All I need to do for that before going to the front end code is to emit the user's array from the server to the client through an event which I will call user list on the connection and on the disconnection as well. Then back in the chat component I create a new state called chat users that will be the array storing the connected socket IDs starting as an empty array and below that I can say that whenever an event called user list has been emitted from the server take the data that comes with it and set it as the value of the chat user's state. And then below in the JSX I can simply map through the chat user's array having each element as a list item. That's exactly how I did in the fruits array in the fruit list component. And after this the list of the socket IDs displayed in the terminal and on the browser should look exactly the same. There will be one issue here. If I go straight to the chat component after opening a new tab, then the socket list will be refreshed correctly in each tab. But if I start with the main page and then click on the chat, I won't see the list of connections in that new tab. The reason for that is that when I connect to the main page, the server notices that there is a new connection and the user array gets broadcasted to every client. That means that the clients will add the new client to the chat user's array in their chat component but since the chat component of the new client hasn't been rendered yet, its chat user's state remains empty and that's why I can't see any list there. That array will only get a new value when another client connects or disconnects because those are the two cases when the server broadcasts the user array. A solution for that is that the user list gets updated every time the chat component is rendered. I use the use effect hook for that and inside of that use effect I emit a new event called update users without any data. And in the server, once that event is fired, the list of the users will be broadcasted again, just like it is on connect and disconnect. And now if I open two tabs and see the two connections, I can open a third tab starting on the welcome page and then click on chat. And then I should see a list of three socket IDs in each of the three tabs. It doesn't happen immediately every time, sometimes I have to wait a few seconds, but at the end it's supposed to work properly. Now if I want to be able to send and receive messages in this chat component and display those messages in the browser, first I do a little styling. I import container call and row from React Bootstrap and I want the list of the connected sockets on the left side, that's where I put the mapping through the chat users array. And on the right side there will be a text field for writing a message, a submit button to send the message and a new div where the messages will be listed. And that would look something like this. There is no change in the functionality, I'm still unable to send any message, but at least I can see where I'm supposed to do that, which is a reasonable first step. To send a message from the client to the server, first I'm creating a chat message state an object with two properties, the name of the sender, which for now will be the socket ID, and the message itself, both starting as empty string. 
and I set the name to socket.id here in the user list event. The value of the message property will change the way the new fruits name changed in the add fruit component. The text inputs value attribute will be chat message.msg. I attach a handle change function for on change to it and a new message submit function to the submit inputs on submit. In the handle change function, I use the spread operator and add to the property, which has the same name as the input element's name attribute, msg, the value of the input element's value attribute, which is the current value of the new message state's msg property. That's to keep track of what is currently typed in the input field, and as for submitting it, I'm simply going to emit it to the server. After that, I will set the msg value back to an empty string, and before actually emitting it, I first just put the value to the console to make sure that the object really consists of the sender ID and the type message. So I save it, and this here is chat message and not old message. So I rewrite it, open the browser, open the developer tools, click on the button, and that doesn't seem to work because the on submit attribute should go to the form element and not to the submit input. I need to cut and paste it and try again. And yeah, now it outputs the new message object. Now, since it looks correct, I can get rid of this console.log and create a new event instead, call it new message and set the new message object as the second argument. Once an event has been emitted from one side, it needs to be listened to on the other side. So in the server, I do socket.on, new message, and here as well, I console.logout. Well, I just arrived there, just to make it sure. And after sending a text message in the browser, here I can see on the terminal the name and the message. I don't want to do anything special with this object on the server side, so I immediately forward it to all the connected clients with the io.emit method and I use the same new message event name. And that would be everything I do on the server. Now back on the front end, I need to listen to an event called new message here as well. To make super sure, I start here with console.log as well, displaying what just arrived from the server. So now if I open two browser tabs, both with the developer tools open, and I send a message from one tab, then I should see that the new message arrived from the server to both of the clients. The next question would be what to do with this single message. One way to handle it is attaching it to a message list, which could be a state, namely an array, storing all the name message pairs coming from the server. And whenever a new message arrives from the server, I add the new name message pair to this message list by using the spread operator. And in the JSX, I display the content of that message list state as an unordered list, same as I did with the fruit list, mapping through the array, and I also make the name bold and the message italic so that it will become stylish. And finally, I'm going to test this with three browser windows. Type and send the message from one, and I can see that the message appears in each of the two other chat components as well. Ideally, that happens real time. In reality, it doesn't always. If I close one of the windows, there will be only two connections left, as I can see. Anyway, in this episode, the chat component has been created, the general chat function is working, and next I will introduce two new chat features, the chat rooms, where only users in the same room can read the incoming messages, and private chatting, where communication between two users happens.